This is tech trash. Or is it? If by sheer coincidence you had the storage or the attic to keep this stuff around, you might be sitting on a gold mine. No way that this thing still works. <laughs> Millennials are completely obsessed with this old school tech. This is the moment that all the value just went from $40,000. This an Apple computer. So I bought a 19 year old digital point. -ish. More vinyl records were sold last year than CDs. That's closing in on $1 billion in sales. And sometimes there's a solid argument that this technology was better. Most of the time it's objectively way worse. But what is this obsession that we have with retro tech and is it justified? I'm gonna get back to vinyl in a sec. Let me talk about photography first. I, I actually ordered this lens thing from Amazon a few months ago. They took the lens out of a disposable Kodak camera. They 3D printed a thing around it so that you can attach it to a modern camera and voila. It is so pointless if you think about it. Here's a $2,000 state-of-the-art camera, the latest autofocus technology, the latest sensor and color processing, HDR, capturing images through a $1 piece of plastic. But that look, those blown out colors, the noise, it makes it feel different, special, and intentional. And it takes us back. There was a time when a photo was this special, unique gift, a moment captured in time, a physical item that you had to pay to develop, that you care for, that you store in a photo album. My mom made like, I have like six of these in my place. Good chance that you'd never store the negatives, AKA the backups, which means that if you lost this moment, you would lose this memory forever. And well, these are my photos now. It's just tens of thousands that I have not sorted through. This mix of screenshots, random stuff, family photos, videos, vertical landscape, some useless firework videos. I just don't have the time to sort through all of them. Smartphones have democratized photography to the point where it doesn't mean anything. A single photo is, it's like this worthless pile of bits now. Oftentimes a nuisance when our phone storage starts filling up. Occasionally, rarely, a treasure worth saving or, you know, putting an old school filter on to share on Instagram. But if this was the mainstream device of the 90s and this is the mainstream device of today, there's absolutely no argument to say that this is better in any way. This is trash. But there is something about that physical photo, isn't it? Like, Polaroid got something right. You need a flash with every photo, otherwise it's gonna be too dark. But it does give you a memento. It does give you this rare thing these days, a physical thing that you can touch that's not on a screen, that's not on a backlit screen, a reminder of that moment. Film or celluloid, that's a trickier debate. The whole point of this video is this question of, do we treasure this old tech for some deep nostalgic reason or do we want it because it's useful? And today's sponsor is absolutely the latter. Because Paperlike is a screen protector that makes your iPad feel like real paper. If you use an Apple Pencil to take notes or to do art, or in my case, to storyboard the animations that we put in the videos, then the glossy, slippery feel of the iPad might not be the ideal material. I often have to like redraw lines once again because the pencil slipped or because my handwriting didn't look right. I didn't tell these guys, but before even accepting the sponsorship, we bought our own paper-like protector, installed it and started using it for the stuff that we do. And it does feel massively better than the original iPad screen, not to mention that it protects it, which actually convinced us to keep the iPad without a case. Beyond the storyboards and the sketches and the teleprompter, I use the iPad to watch the occasional film, which looks as crystal clear as ever and with much less glare. So I genuinely think this is a great product. You can buy your own using the link in the description and you can support the channel in the process. Thanks Paperlike for sponsoring today's video and a bit of our paper nostalgia. It would actually really surprise you the number of movies that are shot on film and archived on film every single year. Half of the Oscar winners this year were shot on film, so look no further than that, right? Right. This is my good friend Jaime. He owns this media preservation company that does everything on film from taking the footage from their production to scanning it to then reprinting it for movie theaters and most importantly, storing it because film is the best medium to store footage for eternity. What is this passion about of, of still using film? Uh, is it on the look? Is it on the feel? Depending on who you talk to has a superior image quality or, you know, a special texture or rich colors and grain and dynamic range, right? So all of these things are considerations for filmmakers, but also artistic expression and just kind of the, you know, the, the kind of analog warmth that it carries. To all asp aspiring filmmakers out there, I would like to say, please try shooting uh, that incredible new hip thing called celluloid. This is a heated debate, one that, it, that it's gonna get us in trouble. Film is much more expensive 
and much more complicated to use. There's a developing process that requires harmful chemicals. Some will claim that the end result has some has more lifelike colors or more resolution and this more aesthetically pleasing grain or, or noise. However, objectively, 35 millimeter film is equivalent to anywhere between 2K and 4K in digital resolution. And present day cameras have much more higher resolutions than that. Most digital cameras today are able to capture more dynamic range than when monitors can even display. So if you end up watching that movie on your phone screen, does it really make a difference if it was shot on film? How many people actually care? Why bother? So this, is, is it really worth the trouble? Absolutely, it is. Uh, it definitely is. Uh, you want a perfect example of that, um, go watch Black Swan, which was uh, shot by master cinematographer Matthew Libatique on beautiful 16 millimeter stock, really punchy. And when you watch it on your phone, you can still see all the beautiful grain swimming in the picture. You know, it, it even on a small scale, it has kind of this special artistic property that does invoke an emotion. I'd say start there if you want to see what a what an iPhone can do with, with film, 16 millimeter. There is something about watching a film captured and projected on film, something that I, I just can't quite place, but I can acknowledge. I'm not sure if it's the grain, not sure if it's the stutter of a 24 FPS versus the fake smoothness of 120 Hertz. Which drives me absolutely nuts, by the way. I cannot fathom how the default setting in most TVs these days is the shitty soap opera smooth look and that you have to go out of your way to disable it. But then I remember most people aren't geeks, OCDs like me, and they don't really notice. And a good chunk of people actually think that's better. So I just shut up about it. Your TV will still ruin your movie. What'd you say? Check the settings. Check them. The other tech aspect where there's maybe a justifiable argument is in music. Okay, that's a lot of right now. <laughs> I actually own a turntable at home, and sometimes when I'm like chilling at home, I will sit down and I will play a record. I'm a nerd. I'm I'm, I'm the whole spatial computing thing. Like, but there's there's something about the physical action of using something, of playing music, the intention of playing it. The argument for vinyl is around sound quality and warmth the imperfections on the track, the pops and the crackles, but is that better? I generally don't think it is. While MP3 files do compress the audio spectrum and there is a loss of quality, most streaming services now have lossless audio, which includes every single sound that our ears can detect. It doesn't degrade over time. It's not bound by the literal physical limitations of a needle scratching a piece of vinyl, but it being better at this point is at best a debatable opinion, but that's not what we have them. By the way, I'm not even old enough to have actually used vinyl practically. Cassettes were the medium when I was a kid. 10 times the conventional number of ball bearings for smoother tracking, but nothing we tell you will be as convincing as this. Uh, this, is re uh, this is really cool, but realistically, do you, like, do you go and find a record that you want to listen to? Like, you have to scroll through hundreds of records to find it. But that is the point for me. It isn't better, but it isn't trash. It's a reminder of an older time when music was more deliberate. There's no nostalgia tech that I'm willing to die on a hill for. Blu-rays, because insanely Blu-rays are actually making a comeback. They're, I think they're nostalgia tech too. And they have better video quality than streaming. And that is a fact. Nolan's IMAX films are cropped for streaming, but Blu-rays still have the entire image. Blu-rays have special features. This such a lost art. My sister and I rescued our old N64 from my mom's place and it's a treasure. You can easily buy an old N64 console on eBay. They're not that expensive, but some game cartridges are craved and rare and they're starting to be worth a good amount of money. Marquez paid $40,000 for an unboxed, unopened, brand new iPhone OG version. And I was there for the review. And I was there for the experience along with 8 million more people. Kodak released an 8mm film camera that's $6,000. Each roll of film lasts two and a half minutes and it's over 50 bucks. And I want it. I want it for the little sequences in our videos. Just go back to that time. But it is by no means better. There's no argument that makes 8mm film better than digital. Some would say it's trash. But it is about how it makes us feel. I haven't really touched my N64 as much as I wanted to. Heck, I pay the subscription thing on the Switch for the odd chance I wanna play Zelda. And I get excited when I hear new games are released on the platform, but I only have a few minutes to spend on them. And how much time am I really gonna spend on those games versus, I don't know, GTA 6. 
Notice how Hollywood has also weaponized this a bit. How many movies are set in the 80s and 90s lately? People will swear by the music or the artists of their generation, and they'll often trash any new band. They don't make music like they used to. They don't make cars like they used to, or games, or devices. The dynamics have not changed. Components always have and will continue to be manufactured by the lowest bidder. That was true then, it is true now. The difference is us. There's a very real psychological thesis that explains this, called the peak end rule. People judge an experience based on how they felt at its peak, the most intense point, and at its end, rather than based on the sum or the average of every moment of that experience. We remember those intense experiences during a very intense period of our lives, a period of many firsts. We remember those peak moments, and for us millennials, they are very often tied to tech. Resistance to change is another factor. We are less open to new experiences as we grow older. And with tech, we are so often forced to change. Being in the comfort zone of old tech, if only for a moment, takes us back to this simpler time, which wasn't really simpler from a UX standpoint, but that's a story for another day. And here's the catch, no, wait, wrong channel. And here's the point, it's, it's okay. These companies are playing into our psyche to sell more. But I'm here for it. If that vinyl collection makes you happy, lets you take a break from your phone, get yourself that turntable. If that Polaroid gets us off the screen, if that photo can decorate our desks for everyone, not just for us to see. So yeah, in this case, maybe let's give in to the nostalgia. It's a much better alternative than the tech addiction modern companies want us to live in, which is our video from last week, by the way. Now for more stories on the impact of tech in society, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Catch you on the next one.